this is uh something I think we've discussed this on my Discord before. I don't know if you're involved in conversation or sort, but uh, we talk about Pokemon a fair lot and Yu Gi Oh! because we'll get to cards in a little while, guys. We're nearly half an hour <laughs> yeah. in and we still haven't even gotten to the first topic. But Pokemon, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, from Generation 2 onwards, they're not very replayable games. Uh, Generation 2 is sluggy. Uh, 3 is a little bit better. 4 is where you get up to the story just taking forever. It's the main focus of everything. The, the attitude behind how the games are presented and are developed changes. You go back to Generation 1, and I think this is why you see so many uh, YouTubers still cover it, uh, like Jairos, who was watching before this, he does oh, yeah. speed runs with individual Pokemon. They, those yeah, first games, because they don't have much story, and because they're just Pokemon really, really raw, even if they got a lot wrong with them, subjectively or objectively, whatever, uh, doesn't matter. They're still replayable to such a ridiculous degree. And we were even talking about this uh, some time ago, the Pokemon trading card game on Game Boy. Yes, it's a very small pocket of time, but because of how well it is presented, how well it plays, and the enjoyability of that format, it's just replayable for years to come. Absolutely, I, and I, that's—I I would almost exactly agree. Like, a, Gen One was, I think, the only game or games in the series that I—I I had Red and Blue eventually, Same. and like I, I was definitely by told Gen Five. Okay, that's like, and I definitely went back and re. I, I think I would trade them over to one, like one file yeah. had like all my favorites, you know, whatever. But like, I would just replay the other. And now I will admit, Gold and Silver is probably my favorite game, just because the music, the additions to the Pokemon that were like Scissor and just visually. I love Gold and Silver, and I, I remember being blown away when you finish uh, the Elite Four, and they're like, by the way, now you can go back and do Johto, or excuse me, Kanto, yeah. and obviously a streamlined version, but like, I, my brain of like, oh my god, they, they put two games in one? The value that I'm getting here. And obviously, like, being able to jump into what was it pokemon stadium yeah. with those games like that was just like oh my god my mouth was watering and I, I i i think everyone has this but like i fell out of love with pokemon in gen 3 kind of towards the end of gold and silver just yeah. fell out of love with it and that that's totally fine and i i re-fell in love i i played uh what was it i'm in and pearl that's but i wasn't really into pokemon at the time i was just i hated my job and I, that was a good way to i had the whatever the small 3ds was and get 3ds light or whatever and i was basically playing pokemon just because i remembered how to play it and it was a way to waste time at work but when the remakes of gold and silver came out that was just the right time in my life to catch my attention and really kind of draw me back in and then i got into competitive pokemon and i think as you mentioned like gen one for me battling was just my buddies and if you know gen one competitive it's not that no <laughs> diverse so to speak and it's a fun game but it's a mess but like gen 4 i think many would argue is a really big turning point with the physical special split and yeah. there's so much there that then it became less about the story for me and obviously it was so much fun to replay with better graphics and you got the little guy following behind you in the remakes of gold and silver but that was the first time when it was like i have no interest in starting over because now i have all this other shit that I would want to do with the game. I want to breed these Pokemon. I want to make this team. I, and that kind of that has I, I did play through Gen 5 and I again loved the music and that I would say Gen 5 was the last Pokemon game that I really enjoyed and I know you aren't a huge fan of Gen it 5. It broke me. 
that's and that i think again it was where i was in my life like i can tell you like everything else that was going on in my life at that time and i think that's why it really sticks with me so with gen 3 i switched over to the cards i did not enjoy the games i think in retrospect those games in particular would greatly benefit from the attack split in generation 4 having been implemented in 3 because i I, yeah i don't know if this is a hot take or not but i thought the remakes of generation 3 are probably the best remakes they've done by a very far margin because i think ultimately that batch of pokemon and that region benefits from all the updates the most i think hard gold uh fire red leaf green none of the pokemon really work the same way as they did in generation one it feels very um different games in that um, like the actual yeah like i and i will say i think that's part of the reason why i've i never played the original gen 3 and i obviously played the remakes. <laughs> that, like i i think the physical special split adds so much to the game like, obviously abilities did too but just the what that added to the game as a guy that enjoyed that kind of critical thinking and battling against other players. I I think the types having locked in what type they used really took a lot of the excitement out of it for me. Because it was like, just for example, like Gengar getting Levitate was huge. He was always good, but like that was just life-changing but the fact that he was running stuff like thunder punch or fire punch because the element was locked to his special stat rather than like just actually having good shadow moves a lot of the time because it was like i think go- or shadow ghost moves were physical i believe until gen 4 so it was just like it's not intuitive too yeah, like it was, it was some like some of them. I I get it, so to speak, but like, not. I can't tell you the physical special which is which. Whereas I. like, whereas like, I feel like most of the after Gen Four, just what is the move, and you can probably guess yeah. unless it's like a signature move or something silly. But anyways, but yeah, going uh, one last point that you made about the TCG the card game pokemon that game and i think we've talked about this but like i have i loved the first one to death i didn't even know there was a second japanese only one until much later in life pause i found recently a hack that updates it to be the neo card sets oh you got to send it to me afterwards because i I was going to i was playing a i was doing a playthrough on my twitch where i was doing the uh uh the second game and just like the deck building challenges and as obviously like i know the good decks of that era but oh my god i was having so much fun and then they put little challenges in there like there are npcs with haymaker with rain dance with like real competitive decks and it it's just it's an absolute blast and i think uh there's a youtuber that you introduced me to that Oh, uh, Shuckle. Yeah. Uh, and he just commented recently about the... And here, this will be our transition into cards. But he just commented about Yu-Gi-Oh! reprinting the first six uh, booster packs as just completely... Like, those are the sets. Completely reprinted, all that. And I just was like and he commented how cool would that be for pokemon and i was just blown away jaw on the floor like you know magic can't do it with a reserve list but i pokemon doesn't have an official reserve list i don't think and i know obviously there's issues with wizards of the coast whatever but Uh, i I don't think there is uh they reprinted some of the base set cards as oversized cards a few years back uh all the starters from each generation exactly oh I don't exact know. Exact copies? Uh, pretty much, but they don't mention Wizards of the Coast on them. Okay. Hey, you know, I don't give any hoots about that, but I would absolutely love to have... Because... Even if they use the modern things, frames, I'd be fine with it. No problem. Yeah, like, whatever. Like, the, the gameplay of that yeah. era is so nostalgic to me, and this will kind of lead into that first question in a second. But um, 
I think that would just be the coolest thing in the world. And I, I've mul- and I, you've probably thought this too, that I would love to play that with friends, with my family, etc. But the cost to play that era of the game now is prohibitively expensive. And especially if I want to play with my young son or my wife who's not really into games, I don't want to break the bank just for that Dude, but I, would the be... off. I mean like it's on the list but it's one of those things where it's just i you know it's fun to open booster packs and stuff too and i don't necessarily have that nostalgia for what i would want to do with it but for my son for my wife i think that would be just such a great family activity and i'm i'm like my son is now 14 months we don't let him watch TV. We don't let him uh, use any kind of smart device. Like, he reads books, and that's about it. And yeah. we just counted the other day. Uh, as of right now, he reads regularly about 60 or so books. Like, that he knows the pictures. He'll go, he'll pick them up, and ask them to be read kind of thing. Yeah. And I, I'm very happy about that, but... I want to continue giving him good options, and I understand why so many people end up using smart devices or putting on the TV or whatever. It's tough, but I I want to have those options, but I want them to be interesting and fun for him, too. So, and modern Pokemon is cool and great, but it, it's a very different game than what I grew up on, and... I guess this is the selfish side of it, but I would love for him to have a chance to experience some of that as well. Yeah. So, This was a clip from the Extra Deck Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out the channel a lot. Also, be sure to check out my card game, Hyperjukin. It's the one with the wrestling, and the animals, and the key blasts. Every purchase of Hyperjukin not only supports the channel, but helps get the following sets produced. Thanks for watching.